Patrick Otema is 15 years old. He was born deaf, but in this remote northern region, there are no schools for deaf children. In his whole life, Patrick's never had a conversation. Hello. Good? His father, Charles, looks after him. They are only able to communicate through very basic gestures. We've been sitting here talking about Patrick in front of him, and while he's been watching us, he doesn't understand what we're saying. It feels almost rude. But this is what Patrick's life is like all the time. I'm here with someone who wants to change all that. Raymond Okello is deaf himself and a sign language teacher. Do you think he could learn sign language? With the help of our sign language translator, Raymond explains that tomorrow he is starting the first sign language course ever set up here. Mm. He urges Charles to bring his son and transform his lonely life. This is pretty much Patrick's existence. His father gestures to him what he wants him to do, and when he's finished, he goes back to his hut to spend the rest of the day on his own. Patrick's fate is not unusual. The majority of deaf people in sub-Saharan Africa have never been taught sign language. Unable to communicate with others, they're trapped in their own minds. I really hope he makes it to the sign language course tomorrow, but I think that for him, it'll take a lot of courage just to leave the village. Two percent of Uganda's population is deaf, double the rate in the UK. This is because many people in Uganda become deaf after contracting common diseases like measles, mumps and malaria. Raymond became deaf as a child after a bout of malaria. Six months ago, he traveled to the capital for intensive training in sign language. Now he's back with a mission. Raymond, this is the first time you're gonna be teaching sign language to others. Are you nervous? It's two o'clock. The first deaf students start turning up. and class begins. The course has already started, but Patrick hasn't turned up yet, and I'm worried that his father couldn't convince him to leave home. A few minutes later, Patrick arrives. Patrick's transformation is amazing. It's almost impossible to believe it's the same boy we met yesterday. New deaf students keep arriving. Many have walked miles to be here. There's a nine-year-old boy and an 80-year-old woman. Everyone in the class is participating, and you can see how enthusiastic they are to be here. 
This really is the first time they've been taught how to truly communicate. Relatives are here too. Mothers, fathers, sisters and sons who want to be able to chat with their loved ones. Before the end of the class, each new student goes to the front. The class votes on a new name for them. This is now Patrick's sign name, and he will use it for the rest of his life. He has just been baptized into a whole new world. Patrick did so well. How did you feel seeing him in the class? Patrick still has a long journey ahead, but today was the crucial breakthrough. Raymond urges him to practice the alphabet at home and to return tomorrow. It was amazing to watch. People were paying so much attention to you. This course will last three months. After that, Raymond hopes to take his classes into even more remote areas. The best way to learn sign language is at school, starting from an early age. So I head south to Chegegua to see a deaf school in action. Most of the students here are boarders. They stay in that dormitory over there. This is the only primary school for deaf children in this whole region, and some of the kids come from homes up to 100 miles away. The school is run by head teacher Grace Ampere. This morning, she's teaching a class for children who joined the school this year. That boy there sitting in the back, his name is Peter. He's 11 years old and today is his first day. He knows no sign language whatsoever. Grace says that most young new arrivals pick up sign language quickly. In a month, they have mastered the most important words. We feel very excited. The third may, may get that talent. And because of lack of language, that child may stay there hiding. But when the child has the language, he's, he's free. He's free, he's able to express himself or herself. There is no shyness. You see, even this one, he has some shyness. But after one month, that one will have disappeared. If you come here next year, he will have sensed it. <laughs> he will have sensed it. It's time for lunch. It's in the cafeteria that this place really comes alive with conversation. There's hands moving everywhere. And in a way, this place is really loud right now. Kids are constantly teaching each other signs. The older ones take the younger ones under their wing. They even try to teach me some signs. These are the kids from Primary 7. They are all fluent in sign language because they have been studying here for many years. Jacqueline Mukamungu is 16 years old. Do you remember what it was like when you didn't have sign language? She tells me many students prefer being at school than back in their villages, where there's great stigma surrounding deafness. There are only 28 primary schools for deaf children in the whole country, 
which is why most miss out on learning sign language. In their communities, they are often called kasiru. It means a person who is mentally deficient and useless. The mistreatment of deaf children frequently starts in their own homes. I join the Primary 7 students as they rehearse a play. It is about a deaf girl neglected by her family. For many of the students, the play reflects events in their own lives. Davis Baluku, who's 15, tells me about life in his community. Many parents prioritize the education of hearing sons and daughters. Deaf children often have to wait years before they finally start school. These students are about to finish primary school, but they range in age from 15 to 22. And this is because they all started school late. Often their parents don't bring them back in time, so they're missing out on big chunks of their education, and they're constantly playing catch up. After classes are finished, the children all gather for a long session of games and dancing. And the teaching of signs never stops. It's the end of Peter's first day. It must have been a completely overwhelming experience. So many other deaf children being introduced to sign language. He seems to be coping pretty well. The day starts at 6.30. All the primary seven pupils are studying. In less than one month, they will be sitting an entrance exam for secondary school. Those who fail to get in or don't secure the school fees may have to return home, a prospect many fear. How would you feel if you had to go back to your village? Jacqueline tells me deaf girls in rural areas are more likely to be targets of sexual violence. Rapists believe someone who is deaf won't be able to tell anyone. Many parents here are very supportive of their deaf children, but not all. Some see their deaf children as a source of shame and only brought them here after being taken to court by deaf rights activists. School holidays always pose a challenge. Some of them come to me saying that, ah, we are not going home, we are going to stay with you. <laughs> but some of them are forced by the parents, they are forced to go. They go some of them go crying. Grace tells me that physical violence at home is common. There is one child here who, whenever he does something wrong, the father could tell other, other, other siblings that you slap that, that stupid, stupid deaf. Hmm? You see? So they are abused in many ways. One of the most difficult parts of her job is seeing kids who cannot afford secondary school forced to return home. Uh, life becomes difficult to that person becomes difficult. Because like for instance, say if I can stay for two days without communicating, you see, you feel something is missing. Communication is very important to everyone. Yeah. To see what life is like in the villages where these children grow up, 
I joined two deaf rights campaigners working in the district of Masaka. We're here with Nasser, who's a deaf activist, and Mary, who's a local volunteer. They come out into the deep countryside to find deaf children who aren't going to school. Today, they are checking up on a family they've been helping. <laughs> Edouard Serawada is 11 years old. He was born deaf. Edouard has been attending a local deaf school for two years since Mary secured a scholarship for him. The new term started one month ago. Edouard should be there now rather than at home. But his mother Molly says she cannot afford the extra costs for his uniform and books. Mary's concerned. <laughs> Stuck at home, Edouard hasn't been able to communicate with anyone in sign language for a month. He shows Nasser his schoolwork. We go with Edouard and his brothers to fetch water from a borehole three miles away. It's one of his daily tasks. He says he was stopped here last week by 10 local boys. ones. These sticks here, they're covered in thorns. He's showing that these are the sticks they used to beat them up. Do you think they did this because you're deaf? This is not the first time Edouard has been beaten. His mother says they've had problems with both children and adults in this community for years. Many claim he is cursed. Edouard is desperate to return to the one place he feels safe. <laughs> As Nasser says goodbye, Edouard is upset. Do you think you'll be able to help Molly? Of course, otherwise if we don't help, that, that seemed to be the end of his life. I return to Chegegua to catch the school play. Many parents who live nearby have come to see it. As the kids get ready, some of the parents tell me about the challenges they face bringing up deaf children in Uganda. The play is about to start. It's about a family with a deaf child who's treated like a slave. She stays at home in the fields whilst her hearing sister goes to school. A social worker and policeman 
come to see why their daughter's not getting an education. The threat of jail makes her parents change their minds. The play has an impact. One of the parents, a local councillor called Nyansi Okamihanda, approaches the students. <laughs> So, the kids are thrilled, but they want more than just words. It's my last day at the school so I check up on Peter. He shows me all the words he now knows. Like it? You're smiling, yeah. It's difficult to believe he's only been here 10 days. Many children in Uganda miss out on school, but coming to a place like this makes you realize that the consequences of missing school for deaf children are far worse because without sign language, in many ways, they're lost. So bye bye. It's time to go. But before leaving, I drop by Masaka as I've heard good news about Edouard. He's back at school. Mary and Nasa were able to collect money from neighbors and fellow activists. Edouard's now continuing his education. He's joined this week by a new arrival. Five-year-old Margaret. It's her third day here. So far, she has refused to join in. Margaret's journey into the world of communication begins. Thanks for watching this classic Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.